Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to continue our look at Howard Chaikin's American Flag. Today we're looking at number four through six, which encompass the second story arc in the series, Southern Comfort. Get ready for a lot of fun and excitement. Let's start. Here's number four. Reuben and the Pirates. I still don't understand this uh, title because there's no pirates in here. I guess there's hijackers. I guess that's kind of like a pirate. But I do uh, appreciate that uh, the lettering here is very Milton Caniff, uh, old-timey comic strip font. Pretty nice stuff. So we start off with a little prologue here. Um, we see all of these dead out-of-date uh, satellites in uh, Earth's atmosphere. Because, you know, after 96, the collapse, um, they, uh, most of the countries are, couldn't keep them, uh, you know, active. So we see a little, one of them we focus on. It's a Russian satellite that was launched in 95, right before everything went to shit. And this is weird because this satellite, its single purpose was the disruption of the 1996 American presidential election, an election which never took place. So this is weird. It's like 20 years too early. Howard Chaikin predicted uh, Russia's interference with our elections. Um, a small meteorite hits it and through some cosmic joke, through some act of God, it somehow reactivates the satellite, which is a weather satellite. But I guess uh, that was its front. Uh, it was really put up to disrupt the elections. But it also happens to be a weather satellite. So this uh, little satellite called Sprite is operational. And uh, this will have repercussions in the next few issues, as we shall see. Okay, so we're back in Chicago at the Hilton Krieger Memorial Plex Mall. They changed the name of the mall uh, in honor of the deceased ex-chief of the Plexus Rangers there, who we saw his murder in the last story arc, the first story arc. Um, for some reason, <laughs> um, the Plex Mall uh, decides to host recruiting drives for the IRA and the People's Republic of Great Britain, who are at full-blown war right now. And they even put them right next to each other. So there's a lot of things in American flag that don't really make logical sense. But, you know, Howard Taken doesn't care. He just he just wants to set up things for comedic effect or um, just to talk about the things he wants to talk about, his interests. So it's very silly that they would do this. But then again, it's a crazy world, so... Crazier things happen in our world all the time where people do stupid things like this. So now we go to the um, Plexus Rangers office. The mayor there, C.K. Blitz, is there talking to Ruben. Um, he's basically saying, hey, you've got to go down to Havana in Brazil um, and basically uh, babysit my illegal basketball team. They're doing a mini tour in Latin America. And Ruben is just like... The mall's a mess. <laughs> it's Everything's crazy, and you really want me to do this. He's like, yeah, I'm your boss, basically. So he's uh, all of a sudden, they hear a, a gunshots and uh, a security alarm. And Ruben runs off and uh, to take care of the situation. He grabs one of uh, CK's security bots, uh, Ernie. Ruben mentions that he says, usually you're the first person under a table at the sign of trouble. And he, he says that he's been taking his daughter Medea's chick lewd medication. So uh, he's basically, he's uh, beyond pain. He's, he's not really, he's blissed out. It sounds like a really good drug. So here we go. 
title page. Uh, almost the same creative team, except for very unfortunately, uh, Lynn Varley has left as colorist and Leslie Zoller has come in. Leslie Zoller is not the worst colorist, um, but she's no Lynn Varley. Uh, as we shall see, uh, Leslie Zoller makes some interesting color choices here and there. Uh, definitely more interesting than your average, you know, dopey comic at the time from Marvel and DC. But it's just not the same. It's, it's Lynn Varley's the best. So I'm kind of like criticizing Leslie Zoller. Not a bad co colorist, but no Lynn Varley. So Ruben shows up and the guys are at each other's throats, the IRA and the English guy. And Ruben kicks the shit out of them. <laughs> but they both yell diplomatic immunity, so Ruben has to lay off. But he basically threatens them and says, guys, no more shenanigans. Or I'll fucking move you both to the God Goddardammer crack turf. Basically, I'll put you in the middle of a war zone if you're going to keep this up. So now we see a special TV show. Um, it's the Thanksgiving dinner for the, of the mayor. And we kind of catch up with all the characters, what's been going on. Uh, Senora de la Cristo is still there, the aristocrat from Brazil. She's still hanging around. Um... Medea has had a total change, uh, CK's daughter. If you remember in the first story arc, she was like a biker chick. And now she is like, totally had to go through therapy and has become this daddy's girl, daddy's little girl type. Totally cheery and a little goody two shoes. She looks kind of repulsive with her crazy outfit and her wig, her hairstyle. So, um... Of course, we see the obligatory Norman Rockwell homage whenever anything is about Thanksgiving. Kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's so fucking overdone. I expect more from Howard Chaykin. But uh, we see Raul the cat again, still pestering people to scratch his chin and his head. And CK announces to the everyone there in the media that his daughter, Medea, is going to enlist in the Plexus Rangers. And Mandy and Ruben are just like, what the fuck? That's nuts. Media Blitz is going to be a Plexus Ranger. So uh, Mandy and Ruben are still at item. And uh, their friend, mutual friend Bill, who's the um, kind of a tech guy who works for the Weathermen, the old hippies, who kind of hold on to the pre-collapse information. Bill has uh, figured out that the subliminal uh, things within Bob Violence, the signal has been emanating from Brazil. So Ruben's like, hey, I gotta go to Brazil anyway with this basketball team. This is fortuitous. I can look into this shit. And uh, he goes to meet uh, CK and Senora de la Cristo's under the desk. Of course, it's American flag. There's got to be some sex thrown into every few pages. It's kind of interesting, um, a little callback. In the first story arc, the villain, Shyskoff, his, uh, his front was to be a, a jewelry salesman, and he sold these Soviet pieces of jewelry, and she's wearing one of them. So I kind of like that. They refer to the first story arc in a little subtle way. So it's Saturday night, so Ruben's got to deal with the the weekly Go Gang attack. And this is another thing I don't understand in the first issue, or the first few issues. Ruben jammed it. He, he jammed the signal from Bob Violence so the Go Gangs wouldn't attack. I don't know if maybe the Plex said you can't do that anymore. So now they just got to deal with the Go Gangs. But Ruben's got a new technique. He's got a new uh, strategy. He's got these landmines full of somnambutol, the sleeping gas stuff. And the few that don't get uh, knocked out by it, he runs in. And of course, it's Cyril again, the leader of the genetic warlords. He's, Ruben's always kicking his ass. It's like a daily occurrence. 
And uh, Cyril tries to say, hey, man, it's those subliminals. Because everyone knows about this now. Ruben's been talking about it. I can't help myself. <laughs> and Ruben still beats the shit out of him and just says, dude, show a little self-control. So they throw, so they uh, succeed in uh, repelling the Go Gang attack. Back inside the mall, uh, Ruben and Mandy are talking, and uh, she's like, "Why don't you report it to Marsplex?" And he's like, "Well, you know, he he doesn't trust uh, the Plex. They're they're pretty corrupt." So now we see um, they, they pretty much say their goodbyes. And Ruben, for some reason, decides to leave her in charge <laughs> as a deputy Plexus Ranger. She deputizes, he deputizes her. It's so weird because there must be other Plexus Rangers in the station, in, um, in the mall. I think there are, we know this. But for some reason, he deputizes her and leaves, leaves her in charge. So I don't quite get it. So Ruben's gonna go on his trip with Bill. He's taken Bill, who, by the way, is a, a direct bloodline uh, relative of the British royal mar monarchy. And Medea's going to go with him. and Because Medea's going to report for duty at the Brazil uh, Mall. Of course, the basketball team's there. And they're all dressed as priests because they're undercover. They're an illegal basketball team. So during the flight, the skull crushers are just, they just knock them out with some Nambutal. They keep them sedated so they don't get in any trouble. And the captain of the ship is Crystal Markova again. Crystal Gale Markova. And so, uh, Ruben continues his dalliance with her. They're, they're definitely an item when he's not having sex with Mandy and 20 other women. And uh, she's, she goes to relieve um, the other pilot. Her break is over. And Ruben goes with her. And when they get to the bridge, the other pilots, they beat the crap out of him, is these terrorists. And they're from the the altar boy platoon of the Provisional Order of the Black Shamrock. They're like an auxiliary of the IRA. And they, they've got some smarty pants who works with them who's made a nuclear bomb. So they're going to hijack this airship, fly it to England, and blow up London. And so they... Uh, uh, the leader says, hey, take these two upstairs to the fuel bank. And while he's leading them through the guts of the ship, Reuben and Crystal make their move and they attack. They attack him and kill him. Reuben's kind of uh, torn about that. Reuben's still kind of a, a sweetheart, you know? He's violent, but he's not a murderer. But, you know, it was either him or them. So Crystal says, get over it. Grow up. So then they cut off the audio visuals throughout the airship. So the, the terrorists can't see or hear where they are. Ruben sneaks his way back to the, um, where the basketball players, the skull crushers, are uh, asleep and he wakes them all up. And here we meet the captain of the Skull Crushers, Jules, who's a, whose stage name is Death Wish. And he basically makes a bargain with him. He says, I need your help. These guys have taken over the ship. And Jules is like, he's like, hey, I'm not, we're not an anti-terrorist unit. We're basketball players. Fuck you. So they make a deal. Jules makes some demands. And uh, he agrees to do it. Jules is a really great character. He's like this, almost the size of the Hulk. But he's a really smart guy. Really, uh, this brilliant dude. So now we, um, the uh, altar boys, the, the terrorists, 
they got a bead on Flag, they think. So like, okay, let's go get him. But it turns out to be a trap. And then the basketball players with Ruben leading them, they ambush them. They use some knock mockers to make everything dark. And then the basketball players just beat the shit out of them with their bare hands. These guys are strong as hell. So when Ruben gets back to the bridge, the leader of the terrorists are there. And Crystal shows up and she blows them away. Turns out the nuclear bomb is uh, not even real. It's a it's total fake. And I also, shit, I forgot to mention that we find out that these guys aren't even, they're not with the IRA. They're Canadian. They're a bunch of chuckleheads from Canada who wanted to join the Plexus Rangers. Um, they weren't American, so they weren't allowed. So then they try to join the ASLC, the... Um, kind of Nazi militia political group. And they wouldn't take him either for the same reason. So they figured that they would do this elaborate stunt, blow up London, because the ASLC hate the British. They figured they would do this to get in good with them. So they would say, okay, you guys are all right. You can be part of us now. And uh, so that guy dies on his death. Uh, he was mortally wounded. And then we have a little uh, cliffhanger here where uh, Crystal fills in Ruben about how Ambassador Deutschmarks is kind of like uh, the power down there. But Crystal says, oh, he's just a figurehead, the real muscle at El Dorado, which is the capital of Brazil, is his son-in-law. Ivor Overholt. And Ruben says, Ivor Overholt. So we'll find out. They've got some kind of past. Now we have a little epilogue here. We're in, we're in El Dorado. And we're in a little hotel room. And we see this couple about to have sexy times. But they're talking about flag. And uh, the guy in bed who we can't see. Basically, he's just like, ah, we'll see what he's up to. We'll check him out when he gets down here. If we don't like what we see, we'll kill him. And we see that the guy is a Plexus Ranger. So, uh, something uh, shifty is brewing. So, that's it for the first chapter. This is number five, chapter two of Southern Comfort. We have another little prologue showing Sprite, the Russian satellite, and it's now functioning and starts beaming some rays down to Earth, which will be very uh, important in the next few issues. So now we're catching up through a TV newscast. We see Mandy is uh, in charge of the Chicago Plex Mall, doing everything's pretty good there. And then we catch up with the uh, Ruben Flag, who's now in Havana for the first uh, game. This is really unfortunate. Um, this page was cut off, I think, in all copies because it's not like shifted on this side. So they just screwed up the printing somehow. I looked it up. It's just basically, it's nothing that important. A reporter is asking Ruben if the hijacking had, has anything to do with the cattle mutilations that have been occurring across the Midwest. Um, Ruben shows off the black shamrock flag that uh, the terrorists had. And uh, that's about it. So Ruben says goodbye to Bill. Bill's going to check into his hotel room and start to triangulate exactly where the subliminal um, transmissions are coming from. And Ruben goes off with the basketball team and Crystal. They have a game at like two in the morning. So they they end up at the rectory of St. Beryl the Leper. That's a, a front for CK Blitz. They um it's that's why they're all dressed as priests. 
these huge hulking guys are uh, pretending to be priests here. That's how they get around. So Ruben says something about how he just wants to stretch his legs, walk to the hotel. And the guy from St. Barrel, the, their bus driver and handler, he's like, dude, you can't do that. Um, half the people here would kill you for Yankee cultural imperialism. The other half would rip you to pieces in lust. Because uh, Ruben Flagg's old TV show, Mark Thrust, is still being aired and is huge in Brazil. Very popular. And uh, the hologram of Ruben Flagg is still playing Ruben Flagg. Um, I'm sorry, Mark Thrust. So uh, Flagg balks at this. He's like, I'm an actor. I'm a, I'm a clever guy. I'm going to make a costume, a disguise. He puts on this natty little mustache, fake mustache, and has a cane and a limp. He figures nobody's going to recognize me if I, if I do this. He just wants to see the sights. He's never been to Havana. And Havana lives up to its reputation. It's just like fun city. You can see all this great Ken Brzezinek neon signage and logos. Amazon's in love. Holocaust on ice. <laughs> just nutty shit. So Ruben's loving it. He like This is his kind of scene. Then these prostitutes, um, they come up to him and... When they open their jackets, it turns out they're trans. And he says, sorry, ladies, I got a meeting. No can do. So they're like, let's cut the Namby. So they attempt to mug him. And all of a sudden, this guy pops in out of nowhere with wicked martial arts. And knocks over one of them. The other two go scrambling. And uh, Ruben's grateful. He says, hey, I'm Ned Beaumont, hotel role in security. Just doing my job. Here's my card. The card says Tom Slick investment analysis. And then Ruben realizes that his wallet has been uh, lifted. And uh, the bastard took it. So it was just some kind of scam. So now we're at the basketball game. The Skull Crushers are killing it. They're beating the shit out of the Havana home team at halftime. So when halftime is done, they go back in to play the second half and all of a sudden the Havana team have got like high lie sticks and they're like going to the ref. They're like, what the hell is this? This is basketball. It's not high lie. And the the referees say, you know, I'm blowing grace. And he's just like, high lie, high lie. And they're like, no, it's basketball. So one of the guys gets so mad at him that he just hits him so hard and knocks him into the audience, into the stands. It turns out it's not the regular referee. It's the honorary referee, the mayor of Havana. So the crowd goes wild. They just, everyone starts trying to run down the field to attack the Skull Crushers. So they, they hightail it and just trying to escape. Ruben's making his way out. And uh, these these goons attack him. And then once again, this guy shows up. Ned Beaumont slash Tom Slick with his great martial arts and saves Ruben again. And Ruben's just like kind of mad. He's like, hey, you bastard. And he's just like, this guy's unflappable. He's this really charming guy. Sam Luis Obispo at your service. So this is the first appearance of, for reals, of Sam Luis Obispo. He's going to figure a lot in the American flag story and future issues. So he uh, helps him escape. He says, get on my motorcycle. Um, my sugar mama lives around here. She kind of puts me up. And uh, you can stay with us. And it sounds like it's going to be a double date type thing. He's like, oh, friends here, you get the blonde. The brunette's mine is my sugar mama. So they're in a Dominic Dominatrix kick that week, these two women. So she's trying to like do all S and M shit with Ruben Flag. He's not having it. And she keeps like whipping him with her little thing and he's like, cut it out. He said, I stop uh, stop, damn it. <laughs> and he slugs her. 
but they're so into kinky shit that, you know, the sugar mom is just like, oh, that's all right. She never holds a grudge. It's no biggie for them. So the next day they're back in the airship heading for Brasilia. Flag has got a huge hangover. So it turns he checks in with Bill. Bill has uh, um, been tracking the subliminals, and it turns out it's definitely coming from the capital city of Brazil, El Dorado. So he's going to continue to triangulate it further. So now he's in Brazil. He meets his fellow Plexus Rangers down there. Uh, Chief Ranger Gollum, he's in charge. And he meets Arcadia Driftwood. And he meets Pelham R Riverdale, who was the from the New Orleans mall. Yeah, Ru Ruben knows this guy, Gollum. Uh, when Ruben was on Mark Thrust, before they kicked him out, he was a technical advisor on the show. So they know each other. He asks about Medea, how she's fitting in with the Rangers. And he basically says, oh, she's a little princess. I got her on latrine duty. She's been being such a little princess. So finally, we meet Ivor Overholt. And we see a flashback. Ivor Overholt, and they went to college together. He, he hung out with these total Nazi guys who... They would like paint swastikas over uh, Flag's door, uh, beat the shit out of him all the time. Um, of course, the Plex just called it, oh, it's high spirited hazing. You know, boys will be boys. So Ruben dro dropped out of flight school. That's where it was, sorry. It was a flight school college. Ivor acts like it's no biggie, just like, hey, it's been years. How have you been, Flag? You know, like it was... He wasn't a total fucking piece of shit. So he informs him that there's an anti-plex demonstration brewing right now. So we're going to go crack some heads, basically. We're going to plex some muscle. So they're driving out there. That uh, Riverdale guy, Pelham Riverdale's in charge. He's kind of like the second in command. Arcadia Driftwood kind of spills the beans a little about him and basically says that, like, this guy's, when he was in charge of the New Orleans Mall, when he took it over, within like a week or two, the Go Gangs had disappeared. Not only had he stopped their stopped their attacks, they were just gone. So it's it's kind of implied that this guy is a hard, hardcore cop. So Ruben is starting to have doubts. You know, they get to the demonstration. He realizes that uh, this is like the Warsaw Ghetto Uprisings, but I'm on the wrong side. Because these are just people who have a, who are right to gripe about the Plex, but he's got to bust, you know, bust their heads in, which they do. And uh, while he's wading into the crowd, he sees Sam Luis Obispo again. And he kind of hustles him out of there, saves him. Of course, Sam was just there to pick some pockets. You couldn't resist a big crowd. And they succeed in quelling the riot. So later that evening, uh, Crystal and Ruben are having sexy times again. And she gets invited to this big fancy party at Ivor Overholt and his wife's mansion. And it's got a plus one, so Ruben's going to come along. Because he didn't invite, Ivor Overholt did not invite Ruben because he hates his guts. So he checks in with Bill again. Bill is triangulated even further that it's coming from the mall. The subliminal transmissions are coming actually from the mall, which implies that it's like the, the Plexus Rangers are involved. While they're talking, Bill realizes that there's a vague echo fluttering when they speak, so he thinks they're being tapped. It's really interesting, Ken Brzezanek makes the lettering like wonky, little weird 
strange lettering to make you like read it that way. I really like that idea that he goes the extra yard to like, you know, to do that. So Bill is a really good tech guy. So he sends a transmission back to the tappers. He knows how to do it. That totally blows their shit. And it turns out it's that couple from the little love nest, the hotel room. Still don't see their faces because it's a mystery. And uh, he's pretty bummed because uh, thousands of dollars of a of uh, equipment was blown. So she consoles him and says, oh, why don't we just have some sex? But here we see something interesting. We see a photo that says, love Peggy, which will be uh, important later on. So we're at the big party. Uh, Flag is drunk. And he just goes into some little room to f fuck Crystal. And uh, they get caught. Ivor's pretty pissed that Ruben's at the party, but, you know, what can he do? She, uh, he's her plus one. They see Medea just waiting tables. That, that was That's her chore as a, as a newbie. And she's just like, you got to get me out of here. Call my dad. I hate this shit. And Ruben's just loving it. <laughs> so Ruben meets uh, the ambassador, Deutsche Marks. And he says, hey, I want you to meet my daughter, Desiree. <laughs> and it's the dominatrix woman. It's uh, Sam Luis Obispo's sugar mama. So they go off to like chat and she totally basically makes a pass at him and says, we sh you know, I like the cut of your jib from the other night. We should do some more stuff. And he's like, well, first of all, I don't knowingly fool around with other men's wives and especially not the wife of a man who's a psychopath who hates my guts. So she says, that's my final word, no. <laughs> and she gets pissed off. She's a woman scorned and she storms off. So she obviously like whispers in her husband Ivor's ear. Because all of a sudden Ivor is like, hey, before we uh, say goodnight, I just, I just want to make an announcement. Tomorrow, we're going to crack down on the illegal sports activity. An illegal sporting event. And we're gonna get the, the we're gonna crack down on that basketball game tomorrow. So Ruben's like, oh motherfucker, this is gonna suck. What am I gonna do? So now uh Ruben goes to find Sam Luis Obispo. And uh it's a pretty nice drawing there. I, I did want to mention that it does seem like some of these panels, Howard Chaikin's leaning a little too hard into the stippling and the whatever it's called, the 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 pointillism, where sometimes it's overdone. And it's just a little too much of it. I didn't notice that in the first three. It was like kind of perfect blend, but this time, I don't know. I'm a little, uh, I don't like it as much. So Sam and Ruben are going to make a plan to get themselves out of this. Now, once again, we go back to the little love nest and who should walk in? It's Pelham Riverwood. And he's in on their scheme, whatever it is. But we find out that it does involve the ASLC. So they're apparently working with them and uh, they're behind the subliminals. So that's why the transmission is originating from the Plex Mall because the Plexus Rangers... These bigwigs are behind it. And also, Pelham promises to uh, get rid of Ruben Flagg tomorrow during the assault in the basketball game. Okay, here we got the final chapter of Southern Comfort, American Flag number six. Once again, we see Sprite, the Russian satellite. It's fully beaming now and operational, and it's aimed right at the Illinois area. So in... Chicago and the area around it. It's freakish weather patterns are occurring. Um, 18 to 25 inches are falling every night. Um, it's just nuts. But now we cut back to the main story. So they're getting ready to uh, raid the illegal basketball event. And Pelham 
puts Reuben in charge of a cadre of young cadets. And this is one of the weird things, another weird thing I got to mention about, like, it doesn't really make sense, but who cares? But Reuben Flagg basically has been a, a Plexus Ranger for two months now. But everyone acts like he's king shit of fuck mountain, like he's a chief or something. Like he's always like in charge of, he's literally, should, he's a rookie, a, a raw rookie. I mean, he's, he, he didn't even go to like military academy or anything, or I'm sorry, police academy. But it, two months after becoming a Plexus Ranger, everyone's just like, okay, you're in charge. So he's part of this cadre of cadets is Medea. And she's just bitching like, call my father, get me out of here. I can't take this. And Rube is just like, shut the fuck up. I got bigger things on my mind. So we're back at the Skull Crusher um, locker room. Sam Lu Louise Obispo is telling them the plan. And I gotta say, I it's uh, I don't really understand the plan. I've read this a couple times <laughs> last night. I still don't quite get it. We cut back to the little Love Nest Hotel. And one of the... Um, guys who works there is uh, assaulting, sexually assaulting the, the woman there. And the her boyfriend, the Plexus Ranger, shows up, beats the shit out of him. Probably is going to kill him in a second. And we find out that it's Chief Ranger Gollum. So he's been in charge of all of these shenanigans. Flag's boss. So that's uh, pretty interesting there. So now we're cutting back to the raid on the the basketball game. So here's the plan I don't understand. So Sam and the basketball players rob the ticket office of this Coliseum and take all the money. I don't understand how that helps them, I don't know, escape this... Uh, this police raid, this plexus raid, but I don't know. I'm not that bright. So we're back to the the action. Pelham says, kind of sends Ruben off to this weird little place in the Coliseum to check something out, a hidden crawl space. And Ruben's happy because Ruben wants to get away so he can like, you know, uh, rendezvous with his uh, buddies. So he's in the, like the bowels of this auditorium and. Nobody else is there except there is someone up in the rafters. And he's going to shoot. He, he's going to assassinate Ruben. But then Sam Luis Obispo shows up. And uh, they start to wrestle. And Ruben hears the commotion. And he's like, Obispo? He hears his voice. Here's some amazing Ken Brzezinic lettering. Check this shit out. <laughs> Look at... I mean, he does not skimp on the sound effects. That's some pretty good shit. And, uh... Sam and the mysterious Plexus Ranger fall down the stairs, still struggling, and then... <clears throat> excuse me. Let me get some water. It turns out it's Pelham Riverdale. As you probably guessed, he was going to shoot Ruben. That was his uh, chance. When they go through his wallet, they find out that he was a card-carrying member of the ASLC. So this is, they're totally confused by this because the ASLC are like, you know, Nazi militia, paramilitary group. So it's like, why would this black guy want to be in here, in this group? But, you know, it's... Uh, even today, I mean, why do thousands of Mexicans support Trump? You know, politics are complicated. So uh, Sam gives uh, Ruben a little gift. It's a little like video player. And I guess it's like a sex tape of Desiree Deutschmark's like, overhauled. And he's like, hey, this is like collateral. Uh, so she, if she ever tries to fuck with you again, you could, uh, you know, threaten to release this. So back at the Plex station, uh, Gollum is uh, kind of questioning Flag about what the hell happened last night. How did Pelham Riverdale die? And Ruben's kind of playing dumb, like, oh, I didn't really see the guy who shot him, and I don't know. 
but he does notice on his desk is a picture of Peggy Krieger or Krieger. And a, he says, is this Kr Peggy Krieger? And Gollum says, keep your hands off my property. You know, sh shove your curiosity. So uh, Reuben passes the gift for Desiree along to her husband, Ivor, when he sees him. And when he checks in with Bill again, Bill's like, it is coming. That transmission is coming from the ranger station itself. So now they're, they definitely know that, yeah, it's th these Plexus Rangers are doing this. This conspiracy. So back at the love, sorry, back at the love nest, we see the woman. She's talking to Gollum on the phone. And, uh, she even mentions to Gollum that the ASLC are teaming up with an even more Nazi-ish group, the Posse Comitatus. I guess they're still around in this time. They're like total full-on crazy Nazis. They probably would think that like Hitler wasn't a Nazi enough for them. And they they basically are like, yeah, we want Ruben Flagg dead too. And Driftwood even. So... Everyone's after flag now, all these weird political groups. So uh, that night, they're doing some uh, kind of training maneuvers. Uh, Arcadia and Ruben are like shooting these paintball things at this airship training. And uh, other other guys are have rubber bullets and they're doing little war games. But then all of a sudden, this helicopter shows up with real bullets and starts attacking them. So Ruben tells Arcadia to load up the real ammo and start firing, start defending themselves. Yeah, look at some of this, uh, <laughs> this stippling here. That's a lot of dots. So uh, Ruben aims at the ballast of the airship and right at, with perfect timing, it, they fall right on the, the attacking helicopter. And so the attacking helicopter crashes in this reservoir. Arcadia and Ruben are in hot pursuit. Yeah, look at this. This is like Vir Virgil Finlay. <laughs> amount of dots. That's pretty good. There, I don't mind the amount of dots because it's supposed to be dark. And uh, that's some nice stuff. So they're in hot pursuit of uh, this mystery woman. And uh, Ruben jumps off the sh ship when it's at a low point. And all of a sudden, he's surrounded by more trans uh, prostitutes. And they do recognize him. They're like, it's Mark Thrust. And they're just mauling him. They want a piece of him. So he's running away and uh, trying to escape them. Still trying to chase after this uh, mystery woman. And he kicks this heavy crate down the stairs to, like, stop her. Look at this right here, the... Very like, um, which I guess years later you would associate with like Frank Miller's Sin City, but like classic, like old school comic strip shading here. Very odd, very different than um, everything else he's been doing, drawing in uh, this series so far. So he knocks out the prostitutes with some Nambutal so they <laughs> won't keep attacking him, and he runs down the stairs, and Arcady is there. And this person was wearing a wig and they pull off the wig. It's Ivor, Ivor Overholt. He's been Gollum's mistress this whole time. Very strange, who would have thought? So when Gollum gets back to his little love nest, Reuben's waiting for him. And uh, he tells him that Ivor is dead and you're under arrest. And this just takes the wind out of uh, his sails. Gollum just kind of was like, oh, like, oh, man, shit. So Ruben's kind of questioning him. He's just like, it's like, how could you team up with someone who's like a fucking Nazi? You're Jewish. And he's like, what, did you love him? And Gollum says, don't be a schmuck. I didn't love him. It was an obsession. And basically he's like, let me tell you the story. 
So I guess after Hilton Krieger kicked out his wife, Peggy, after she cheated on him with uh, CK Blitz, she went down to Brazil. I was working down there. And they fell in love. Oh, I'm sorry, this is in New Orleans. He started in New Orleans. And they hung, They had a wonderful two years together. But then once he had to check something out, he was on a mission and she died in an accident. Her, her craft, aircraft land, uh, crashed. So he kept a stiff upper lip, but inside he was just dead. He never did that well with women. This is the first, the love of his life. He's just devastated. And then right then he meets Ivor Overholt, who just came down from Mars. And he got drunk one night with him and kind of told him the whole story, showed him pictures of Peggy. And the next day he gets a call from Ivor who says, hey, come over to this room, hotel room. And he's totally dressed in drag, like all sexy with like a wig, just like Peggy, Peggy's hair. And that's where it started. So I guess ever since then, he's been obsessing about, he's basically has, has had a pe Peggy doppelganger all this time. And Ruben asks him, he says, so you been you were blackmailed into implanting the sublim sublims? And Colin reveals that no, I wasn't blackmailed. The American Survivalist Labor Committee is the only hope this country's got. So he's like a true blue member. And Ruben once again is just like, that's insane. They're you're Jewish and they hate Jews. It doesn't make any sense. So while they're wondering about this, um, Gollum says, just tired, being widowed twice is more than enough for blam. And he shoots, sucks a bullet, kills himself. So now the next day we see on the news, the whole story comes out. Um, everyone knows what the hell happened. And uh, then we have a little uh, cutaway. We're back in Peoria which of course is covered in snow. And we don't see them, but the, it's the ASLC and their leader is named Decker. He's uh, basically like, God ah, damn it, three of our best people dead. So now they're, they got a, they got their target on flag now. So now we're back in Brazil and Ruben is saying good, his goodbyes. Arcadia is going to stay in Brazil since uh, three of their highest ranking uh, Plex guys are dead and and Desiree shows up and she's mad as hell because she got the sex tape thing and she knows that Sam Luis Obispo his fingerprints are all over it she's like where is he she wants to kick the shit out of him and uh, Ruben plays dumb well actually I don't think he knows where Sam is and so Arcadia kind of questions him about Obispo. And she's like, oh, never heard of him. But uh, even though she's kind of in trouble, like she's like, oh, shit, I could get in trouble for this. She still can't help hitting on her. She's like, Arcadia, are you into anything unusual? So uh, remember, this is American flag. No matter what happens, people are going to get laid. So now back in, well, not Chicago, they actually had to land... 300 miles south of the Krieger Plex Mall because of the weather, they arrive home and they find out that it's a stowaway and it's Sam Luis Obispo. And he said, after Desiree firebombed my hotel, I figured it might be a good time to see the USA again. So he just wanted to escape Desiree's wrath. And American, I'm sorry, Ruben Flagg just says, ah, don't sweat it, he's a friend of mine. And... Uh, I could use all the friends I can get. So that's the end of Southern Comfort. Oh man, these are such fun comics. I, I just can't wait to do the next one to see what's going to happen because I totally forgot. I read these, what, 30 years ago? Almost 40? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've reread these. But that's it, American Flag, number four through six. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And I hope you return here to the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.